Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. Good day class. Today we are going to have a quick road safety lesson. Step one, always stop when you get to the road. Step two, you have to make sure to look left, right and left again. And as soon as you don't hear or see any more cars, then you are free to cross the road. Remember everyone, look left, right and left again. Now everyone, I hope that you will continue to cross the road safely. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. to my son online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is properties and before we get into any lessons boys and girls we know that we need to sanitize so let's take our sanitizer and rub inside our hands around our hands in between our fingers on our wrists and our fingertips too. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. For today's lesson, we will be talking about floating, sinking objects and computation. Now, boys and girls, we are going to start our lesson on page 15. On page 15, we are going to be doing something so exciting. It's going to be our job to find out what floats and what sinks. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is to draw four objects, at least four. In the box that you can see, those four objects must be things that you're going to use to find out whether they are going to sink or whether they're going to float. Afterwards, you are going to color them. If you think the objects that you have in your box will float, you're going to color them red. But if you think that it will sink, you are going to color it blue. So for now, let's do that part together. Let's take a look at the board. Now the things that I have, they are more than four, but that's because I want to have so much fun with you. And I want us to understand what actual things float and what sinks. So we're going to start by predicting. Remember, you can only do four. So the first one that we're going to do together is glue. If it's going to sink, then that is going to be blue. But if it will float, then it's red. I think the glue is going to float, so I'm going to circle it red. Then we have the word toy. Now toys can sometimes be heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and say it will sink. 
Hmm, rice? Well, I've seen rice in a pot before, so I think it will sink as well. And then we have a bowl. Sometimes bowls are heavy, so I'm also going to say it's sinking. Then we have an apple. Hmm, let me say this one is going to float. I think apples float. And then we have a spoon. Now, spoons are not that heavy, so I think a spoon is also going to float. We have a candle. Hmm, maybe the candle is going to sink. Then we have a cloth. I think the cloth is going to float because a cloth doesn't weigh that much. Then we have a piece of string. Now, because the piece of string doesn't weigh that much, I also think it's going to sink. Let's say sink for now. Then we have a counter. That counter, because counters come in different sizes, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say it's going to float. Let's see if it will float. Then we have a small glass. And because it's small, I think it's going to float. Then last but not least, we have a tea bag. Now I think the tea bag is going to sink. So let's see if my predictions are the same as yours. Now on my table, you can see that I have all these items ready for us to test. Here, I have a dish full of water. So you'll be able to see whether that item is going to float, which means stay on top of the water, or sink, which means go to the bottom of the dish. The first item that we are going to test is the glue stick. I have my glue stick here, and I said that it was going to float. So let's see if it will float. It does float, can you see? This is the bottom, so it has managed to float. So we were correct. So let's make sure that we know that we were correct by putting a little tick. The next one is a toy. Now make sure that every time when you're doing this at home, you clean up all the items so that they don't stay wet. So the next thing is our toy. Today I'm going to use our toy and let's see if it's going to float or sink. I have said that it will sink, so let's take a look. It's actually floating because if it was sinking, the whole toy would be like this on the floor. But once I put my finger up, it changes, so that means it is floating. Oh no, I was wrong. So that's a cross here. So we're gonna put a cross for this one. The next thing that we have, boys and girls, is some rice. So I said that the rice is going to sink. So let's see, and we're going to put some rice, just a little bit, in and see if it's going to float. I have a lid full of rice and I'm going to put some. Does the rice float or sink? Ooh, they went right to the bottom, so that's definitely a sink. And we were right! Well done, everyone! Let's try the ball. We now have a ball. So, is the ball going to sink like we said or float? Uh oh. This ball is floating, so we were very wrong. Oh well, there's still more to experiment with. The next thing that we have is the apple. So will our apple float, like we said, or sink? Our apple is floating. Well done, we were correct. So let's take our apple out and clean it quickly. 
Then the next thing we have is a spoon. Let's see if our spoon is going to float or sink. We have said that it will float, so let's see. <laughs> that, that spoon went down very fast. So the spoon actually sinks. So we were not correct here. Let's now try the candle. So we have a nice cute little candle and our candle, we said the candle will sink. So let's see if the candle is going to sink. No, it is floating. So that means we were wrong again. Oh no, this is not looking too well for our predictions. Let's now try the cloth. So we have our cloth, the one we used to clean the board. I said that it would float, but let's see if it will. And down it goes right to the bottom. Oh no, so our cloth did not float. Seems like the only thing I got correct was the apple. Let's see, we are still doing our exercise. So the next thing that is going to be tested is some string. I have some string here and we said that the string is going to sink. So let's see if the string is going to sink. Mm, it's floating. So it is actually wrong. Oh no. <laughs> then we have our counter. Now there's a beautiful counter that we have right here and we said that the counter is going to float. Let's see if the counter will float. Yay! The counter is floating! So that means we were correct. Good job everyone. How about the small glass? Here we have our small glass and we said it was going to float. Let's see. There we go. Uh-oh, it, <laughs> it went right to the bottom very fast. So that means it sank. The last thing we're going to test today is our tea bag. So let me remove our glass first. And then let's put our tea bag. Will it float or sink? We said it would sink. So let's see. Hmm. This tea bag is floating. Wow. So I was wrong again. Oh my. So we have now tested all the things we said whether will float or sink. The rest of the exercise I want you to read after you have done your experiments. Remember, the first part is to predict, to say without doing the experiment what something will do. So afterwards, you now need to say what actually happened. Go back into the exercise, you say what you tested, and then after that, you make a tick on whether it floated or if it sank. I'll see you when you're done and have so much fun. By the way, boys and girls, Make sure that you have an adult when you're doing this so that they can advise you what can go in water and what cannot go in water. Have fun and I'll see you when you're done after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. Now to end our lesson, boys and girls, let's all go to page 16. On page 16, we are going to be completing some computations. It's going to be our job to use our number line to solve the following sums. We're only going to do two together, so let's take a look at the board. The two we're going to be doing is 8 plus 3 equals and then 18 minus 10. So, 
I want you to follow me on your number line and I'm going to use it on my number line, the one I have around the whole classroom. Now remember, we start on the smaller number. In this case, eight plus three. So to make it quicker for us, instead of starting on the smaller number, like what I said, let's start on the bigger number and then we are going to add three. So eight is up here. I want you to also go to your eight and then we are going to hop three times. Let's go. One, two, three. We have landed on 11. So eight plus three will give us 11. Let's now do the next one, which says 18 minus 10. So now we start with the smaller number. So when we are adding, we start with the bigger number and then we add the small one. And then here we're going to start with the small one to get to the big one. Let's go to 10. 10 is here. I want you to also put your finger on 10. And now we're going to count going to 18. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Our answer is 8. So 18 minus 10 will give us eight. So take your time, boys and girls. This is very simple. And if you're using your number line, it'll even be much quicker. I want you to be neat when you're writing as well. Shape all your letters perfectly. I'll see you when you're done after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081-74-3759 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over 10 different languages. <music> Boys and girls, we have now come to the end of our lesson and I hope you had fun. I know I did. Remember, if you're not sure what to do or you got confused, that's okay. You can always ask an adult for help, but make sure that you finish your work by yourself. So now that we are done with our work, <laughs> which was a lot, it's time to sanitize. Remember, we sanitize to keep ourselves safe. So make sure that when you sanitize, you are also helping someone else to sanitize the right way. You can show them how to sanitize, just like what we do in the classroom. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. I think I saw a little blue head somewhere sneaking up on us. Ah! <laughs> There you are, Sashi. Hello. So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today and goodbye. Our online school will help you along the way. Find us at www.zoshi.online and download the booklet. Follow us on Facebook to never miss a video. Subscribe to our Zoshi Telegram channel if you want to receive daily updates. Proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibian Community Trust, UNICEF, My Zone Online School, Amos Meerkat Syllabus, and Capricorn Foundation.